Everybody pursues purpose. Everybody pursues purpose. Everyone say purpose. It is not just limited to the Christian faith. This thing of purpose is not just for us Christians. Everybody pursues purpose. Since the beginning of creation, men and women have asked this question, why am I here? And what is my purpose? I love it when you fill in the blanks. It means you're following. It has been said that the two most significant times of your life is the day that you were born and the day that you find out why. The day that you were born and the day you figured out why. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we love you and we adore you and we glorify your name and we give you all the glory and all the praise. May your name be lifted up over the whole earth that you will draw all men unto you. Lord, thank you for your word. It's truth and it's revealed to us and it's been given to us, written down, and we can hear from you by just reading it and help us to delight in your word and study it, to love it, to have it in our hearts, imprinted there. Lord, renew our minds with your word, with your promises, with your hope, that we will not think like the world, but we will think how you want us to think. And it starts with our mindsets. Renew our minds. Work in our lives. Transform us and may we be more Christ-like each day. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, may the church say, Amen. Next slide, please. We are currently looking at the doctrine of man. Everyone say doctrine of man? Also known as the doctrine of humanity. And three weeks ago, we looked at number one, that we, that is both male and female, are mankind. The Bible says God made mankind. Male and female. So we are mankind. We are a kind, if you like, of man. Number two, we are created beings. Do you believe that, church? We are created beings, which means what? We have a creator. It just follows logic, doesn't it? Which means, if you have a creator, it means you have purpose. You're following, I like it. We're a bit livelier today, thank God. Number three, we have been created in the image of God. That means we share certain characteristics of God. We are not God, but we share certain characteristics of God. Love, rationale a mind, creativity, and so on. It also means that we have the same value and worth. You and I are both created in the image of God. We are of the same value and worth. So no one should tell you any different. Number four, just like God is a triune God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are tripartite. Everyone say tripartite. That means we consist of body, soul, and spirit. And number five, we have been given authority and dominion over creation. Did you know that? Did you know that? Some of you don't seem to know that. You've been given authority and dominion over God's creation. So last week, we looked at the fall of man, the fall of Genesis chapter 3, we identified that sin entered the world when Adam and Eve sinned. They went against God. They sinned. Pride, rebellion, lying, stealing, greed, lust, sexual immorality, power struggles between husband and wife, that started with Adam and Eve, birth pains, hard labor, sickness, diseases, murder, and death. Spiritual death and physical death was caused by the fall. If you're wondering what's going on in the world and you see the evil going on in the world, 
Remember where, how it came about. Sin entered the world through the rebellion and the pride of Adam and Eve. Like a disease, sin has spread and affected and contaminated the world and even the nature of humankind. But there is good news, amen? And that is that God devised a plan to reconcile humankind back to him. Sin caused a separation, and God devised a plan to bring back humankind back to himself. It's what we call redemption, to buy back. It was Jesus' blood that purchased us back. That's the good news. Three weeks ago, I mentioned that we are created beings. Logically, we have a creator. And that's a good thing. We did not magically appear, ladies and gentlemen. We did not evolve from matter. Some people think we've evolved from pond life. No, and we didn't come from another species either. But we were created. Now, I believe in evolution, micro-evolution, not macro-evolution. Macro-evolution is the changing of a species to another. Macro means big, micro means small. We are created beings. And a creator has a mind and a creator has intellect. And when a creator creates, they create with intention. Let me say that again. I don't want you lot to dip down on your, on your concentration. A creator has a mind and has intellect. And when a creator creates, they create with intention. That means every single one of us sitting here this morning, including me standing, has purpose. Everybody say purpose. Please turn to the next slide. The question is, what is our purpose? That is the question. What is our purpose? As we look at the doctrine of man, what is the purpose of man? Please turn in your Bibles. To Colossians chapter 1. And that is page 1182. Let's hope no one's looking in the Old Testament for Colossians. I'm going to come back to that verse in a second. Everything that has been created has a... And when something is not being used for its intended purpose, the item appears to be ineffective. Does that make sense? When something is not being used for its intended purpose, the item appears to be ineffective. The items seem to be a waste of money. They seem to be a waste of space. They seem to be a waste of time. For example, would you heat up your food in a fridge? Anybody here would heat up their food in a fridge? It's not a trick question, and some of you are looking like, hmm. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, right? No, you wouldn't. I hope not anyway. Would you eat soup with a fork? Some people have done that, haven't they? Some people are sitting and thinking, I have done that sometimes, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a slow way of having your soup, isn't it? But the answer should really be no. Okay, for those who are thinking I've done that. Would you use a calculator to work out the spelling of a word? There are some words you can do, like hello, isn't it, on a calculator. The fridge is not useless or a waste of money or time. Neither is the fork or the calculator. But when they are not used as the creator intended... They lack purpose. Let's go further before I get to that verse. None of us are here this morning. None of us here are useless. None of us here this morning are useless. None of you here are a waste of time or a waste of space. Sometimes, as parents, we've said comments like that. I've, I've not done it, but 
Sometimes parents have made comments like that to their children. Someone may have told you that, by the way. Perhaps your parents told you that. A relative, maybe a teacher told you this. Someone that you know, someone that you look up to, someone that you trusted. But it's not true. Amen? It's not true. Maybe you have felt that way. Maybe you're sitting here feeling that way. That I lack purpose and I don't really know what I'm about. Maybe you feel lost and confused. Maybe you've lost your way and your sense of direction. You may be feeling old this morning. So you think you're useless because you feel old. You might be feeling too young, so you think you're not ready. You may be feeling unwell in your body, so you think I can't do anything much. You may lack confidence, or you may have no qualifications. But be reminded, church, and be encouraged that you are a created being. So you have a creator, and your creator created you with purpose. You're losing the same edge you had slightly earlier. Purpose. What is our purpose? So now let's look at Colossians chapter 1. Please go to the next slide. Let's see if I've got those passages here. There we go. All of humankind has one universal purpose. So Colossians 1, chapter 15 to 16. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. Concerning the purpose for all humanity, the answer is simple. We have been created through him, that's Christ Jesus, and for him. That is your universal purpose. Our number one pur purpose is to know God. Amen, church? Are you, are you agreeing with me? Our number one purpose is to know God. It is to have a relationship with God. It is to bring glory to God. That is our number one purpose, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. That's our number one purpose. If you do not know God, then you do not know your ultimate purpose. You have one, but you just don't know it. That is our ultimate purpose. So whether you are a theist, which, is a, which means you believe in a God, or an atheist, which means you don't believe in a God, you still have a God in your life. Grasp that, church. Grasp it, grasp it, grasp it. Let me say it again. Whether you are a theist, which means you believe in a God, or an atheist, which means you do not believe in a God, you still have a God in your life. What does the Bible tell us? You cannot serve two masters, right? You cannot serve two masters. Whether you believe in God, that's Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, or not, you have a God in your life. Lowercase g. You have a God in your life. Everybody has a God in their life. What is it? That's the question. You see, every person has been made to worship. Every single person has been made to worship, and it's to worship God. So if you're not worshipping God, who are you worshipping? And when Yahweh is not being worshipped, then something else is. People search for meaning in their jobs. People pursue money. They go after their, they support their favorite uh, sports team, and you can see so often the passion in that. People are ready to fight when their team loses and knock you out. And they're frothing from their mouth and, and they want to go for you because their team lost. 
I wonder how much stocks and shares they've put into that club. In their relationships, people find meaning in that too. Anything placed before God is a form of worship, which the Bible calls what? Sin, idolatry, yes. Let me say that again, please, church. I want us to really grasp it. The word anything is really key here. Anything placed before God is a form of worship, which the Bible calls sin, idolatry. Let me share this that really hit me one day. This really struck me. Sometimes you know things and you know them anyway, but then they hit you in a different way and they jolt you. You're like, whoa. This is what struck me the other day. I was thinking about people that I know, including relatives who are Christians, but they got themselves into a relationship with an unbeliever. I'm thinking about relatives, people that I know, they are Christians, they've said they are Christian, but they put themselves, they got themselves into a relationship with an unbeliever. They've essentially placed their partner before their relationship with God. I know the church is going to get quiet on me now. I knew it. I knew it. Now, I wanted to say something. If you are an unbeliever and you're with an unbeliever, and then you become a Christian, you stay with that person. That's what the Bible teaches. You stay with them. You don't leave them now because you're a believer and they're not, so you come out of the marriage. No, you stay with them. In, in hope that they will see your example, see the light in you, and turn to Christ. But if you are a Christian, already you do not put yourself in a relationship with a non-Christian. The Bible says we shouldn't be unequally yoked. So what they have done is they've placed, and this hit me really hard recently, they have placed their partner before their relationship with God. A mere human has become more important and more necessary than the Christian's relationship and obedience with God. Sometimes you've got to think a certain way for something to hit you hard. For you to put some fear into you. We put human beings in a place of more importance and necessity than our relationship and our obedience to God's word. And then we wonder why things are not working out. I have been there myself. I have been there myself. Do you know what message you are giving your partner when you do that as a Christian? Do you know what message you're giving your partner? That your God is not more significant than they are. That's the message, the subliminal message you're giving your partner. That, 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 that my God is not more important than you are. That's what you're showing them. And it took me, it took me a former girlfriend who was not a Christian to ask me, aren't you not supposed to be doing this as a Christian? That's what it took for me to come out of what I was in. For a non-Christian girl to tell me, aren't we, to ask me, aren't we not supposed to be doing this as a Christian? I'm not going to tell you what we were doing. You can use your imagination. Or maybe don't use your imagination. <laughs> but when she said that, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I knew I was disappointing my father. I knew I was disappointing my mother. But none of that mattered at the time. It was when this non-Christian girl pointed out my hypocrisy to me as a Christian. She knew what I shouldn't be doing, even though she's not a Christian. And she's reveling in the same thing, but she's pointing out what I'm doing is wrong. I thought, wow. And that put the fear of God back into me. Do not put anything before Christ. That's what I'm saying this morning, church. Anything, nothing. Do not put anything before Christ. So every person has some form of God that they pursue. And everyone 
is living to fulfill some kind of purpose. But God's word tells us that we have been created through him and for him. So the harder question is, how do we bring glory to God? How do we do that? I said that we bring glory to God. That's our number one purpose. How do we do that? The question is how. Please turn in your Bibles to Psalm 100. Shall I tell you, Ben, if you have it? Psalm 100, page 604. I'm just looking at verses 1 to 3. Can somebody please stand and read that in a loud voice? Yeah, go for it. Um, Psalm 100. 1 to 3. Amen. Thank you. How do we glorify God then? To glorify God is to worship God with gladness. Verse 2. Some of us, when we worship God, I don't sure if we do it with gladness, to be honest with you. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. So, to glorify God is to worship God with gladness. Verse 2. It is to come before God with gladness. Praise. Verse 3. To glorify God is to acknowledge who he is. It says, know that the Lord is God. You have to know who he is. Know that he is God. Know that the Lord, that's the ruler, the king, is God. God is our creator. Acknowledge God as your creator. Acknowledge God as your Lord. Recognize God as the one that formed you, that brought you into the world. Recognize that we are his people. There's a belonging now. We are his people. We belong to him. You do not belong to something else. You belong to God. Every single one of you, I'm looking at you now, you belong to God. So you're only going to know your purpose if you have a relationship with God. So we bring glory to God with our joyful and glad worship and by acknowledging that the Lord is God. You don't need to turn to this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31 says, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. God, whether you eat or drink, that's the mundane tasks of life. Even the most mundane, monotonous things that you do are to bring glory to God. Please turn in your Bibles to John chapter 17, verse 4. So that's page 1085. Jesus is speaking and praying to his heavenly Father. And he says, in verse 4, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. Jesus says he has brought God glory by completing the work that he was given to do. Jesus came for a purpose and it was fulfilled. You have to have purpose. You've got to have purpose. The question is, what work has God given you to do? That's the question. What purpose has God given you? What work has he given you to fulfill? We are all different. Amen? That's a good thing. We are all unique. We all have different skills, different talents, 
different giftings and different callings. And that will help with our purpose, ultimately. That will help with our purpose and with our work here on earth. What is it that God has called you to do? Do you know it? Please put your hands up if you know, be honest, if you know what God has called you to do. Please raise your hands. It's not many. Okay, let me ask the opposite question then, so to see some honesty. Please raise your hands if you do not know what God's called you to do. So, so not everyone's putting their hands up. <laughs> what has God called you to do? That's the question. Some of you are already walking in your purpose. You may be teaching. You may be counselling. You may be building. You may be dealing with accounts, running a business, caring for somebody. And so you're walking in your purpose. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus, to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. You need to know your purpose, and you will get that through Jesus Christ. Know your purpose. Look at your skills. Look at your, your giftings. Look at your giftings and your skills. Pray on it. Understanding our purpose is much more of a discovery than it is an instant download. That's why some of you can't put your hands up. Understanding our purpose is much more of a discovery than it is an instant download. Some of you are walking in your purpose. Keep walking in it. For some of you, it may take some time to discover your purpose. You may need to grow and you may need to develop more. Or try even something new to discover what it is. Teenagers, some of you may know your purpose already. Some of you are still trying to work that out. It will come as you grow, as you seek the Lord. And oftentimes we need to step out in faith as well. Oftentimes we just need to step out in faith. It took me a long time to discover my purpose. I was probably, what, like 33, 34, to even start to begin to understand what my purpose was. And I still wasn't even sure then. So don't, don't be like me, but it, it happens. From childhood, I wanted to be an artist. My dad was a graphic designer. I wanted to be an architect afterwards because I gave up drawing stuff and I thought I'd draw buildings instead. I wanted to be an architect. Then I wanted to do sports rehabilitation. I wanted to be a physiotherapist. And then my careers advisor at school asked me, what would you like to be? And I said, I would like to be a police officer. He said, you make a good police officer. We need people that can engage with the community and so on. And then I wanted to be a professional basketball player. And then I was toying with that with football. <laughs> Got to college and I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> Stop laughing, man. Come on. That's just wrong. Come on. So some people said, yeah, you could be like the British Will Smith or something like that. So I thought I could do that, acting. I did drama um, um, A-level. Then I thought, you know, I would like to be a fireman. And I did the actual... Um, sort of taste the day course that they did. So I did that. And many of you know that I also went to Hendon as well to do my police training. And then when I was working with the council, I was like, I'm going to put my time and energy into my music. So I was trying to work on being a recording artist and I was doing music production. I was 33, 34 when I left full-time employment to study theology and I was still not sure as to where it was going to take me. I just knew I wanted to study theology. But I wasn't thinking about being a pastor. Even when I came to this church, I was still not thinking about being a pastor. I wanted to help, I wanted to assist, but I didn't want to do it like this, in this capacity. So God will work out your purpose, trust in him, and walk in it. Our purpose is found in Christ. 
Our purpose is to worship Christ. And when we are in Christ, we are to go and make disciples, baptising them in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. As a Christian, that is actually what we're supposed to be doing. So we have purpose. Even as a Christian, we have a purpose. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. We have a purpose. I end here. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans amen he will establish your plans let's just now prepare our hearts as we come to take communion